So today's the big day for Elsa, the Volvo 740. I'm gonna take her in for her MOT, UK MOT. So we're gonna see if she's safe and suitable for the roads. This is the car that I brought over to the UK from Germany. I had it in Germany for quite a few years. So we're gonna see if she can make it through a UK inspection. She passed, can't believe it, she passed. I say that, I shouldn't be too surprised. I've been used to the German inspection, which is quite a lot more strict, so I shouldn't be too surprised that she's gone through the UK inspection without too much trouble, well, without any trouble. Um, but I should say that the UK test is every year as opposed to two years in Germany, so I suppose it can afford to be a little bit more lenient. So I actually opted for the metal pressed plates, and I think they look fantastic on this car. I think it really fits to the period. Yeah, the only thing we needed to do, of course, to get it prepared for the UK roads is to do with the headlights to make sure that the beam was correct. But So welcome back to a very cold and very damp and chilly workshop. And today we're back on Elsa, the Volvo 740. And we need to do something really important on this car, finally, which is the lights. Now, the lights that are fitted to this car aren't suitable at all. I got them from America and because it's the original sealed beam units, they've never been suitable. They weren't suitable in Germany when I had the car there recently for the last few years and they weren't suitable for this country either and I'll explain why now. These original sealed beam units, for one thing, they're way too low wattage. They're 35 watt, which isn't enough, of course. Modern headlights, H4 bulbs, they're running at sort of 55 watt, aren't they? So yeah, big difference. The other issue, of course, and not just because they're small, but I think with a H4 bulb, the lighting is more than adequate, and uh, we'll find that out shortly when we do fit that setup. But another issue we've got is that the beam pattern is flat. It's a, it's a flat beam, which is okay because we're not blind in the opposite side of traffic, but at the same time, we should really be illuminating the street signs on the left-hand side of the road because it's left-hand traffic here. So, and we need to do that to make it legal as well. Um, it's not technically legal to be driving with these headlights. So I've been on eBay and found a couple of goodies. So as you can tell, these things are very old, but they should work. It's new old stock, semi-sealed beam units. It's only semi-sealed because we can actually replace the bulb in it. So fitted to the car at the moment, are these very condensated original sealed beams and you've got the filament inside you can't replace the filament separately it's one complete unit and once it fails you need to replace the whole thing this would have been fitted to audi's audi 200 i think it was so you can tell that it's also correct for these roads because if it's for left-hand traffic or right-hand drive vehicles you'll see that there's an arrow here and if there's no arrow then it means it's for left-hand drive vehicles or right-hand traffic. So yeah, but we'll see that when it's on the car, you'll see that in this section here, the light gets kicked up and it's much brighter there if you, if you look at the, the headlamps directly. So this one here is a Japanese one, um, Koito, I don't know how you say that, Koito Manufacturing. Also a very, very old unit, as you can tell, very, very retro. I couldn't say how old it is. I would love to know, but there's no numbers on the box, a um, couple of part numbers, but there's no date or anything like that. When I actually search this and search the part number, not much comes up at all, and it doesn't seem to suggest any kind of vehicle or anything. So if anyone could help me out with that, that would be amazing because I'd love to know what vehicle this headlamp would have been intended for originally or, or what vehicles it would have been intended for. So the tabs, are broken on these chrome bezels so they're just cable tied in so i'm going to cut these and then the bezel will come off and then we'll see the units so there we go just a couple of cable ties not much 
this one is just high beam. This one is low beam and high beam. So anyway, let's get it off and uh, have a closer look. Help if I unplugged it. There we go. A few months in Europe, and already there's rust starting, and it had managed, even being damaged, the paint being damaged, it had managed 30 plus yards. Not a speck of rust, but yeah, I think the guy that I got them off, I think he was in Arizona, so. Yeah, it figures, doesn't it? Uh, but there we go. So um, that's a sealed beam unit. And those of you that have seen me fit these lights, you've seen these before. Um, but yeah, essentially, as you can see, that's where the plug goes on to. Same as a H4, same style. Yeah, it's too big. So that's going to need cutting out. We'll try this one and see if it works. Yeah, it's exactly the same. So I just stole a bulb out of Lily because she's not being used at the moment. Um, I do have some on the way for this car, some bright ones, but. That wasn't part of the script. Uh, now I've got to clean up broken glass. Yeah, not so sealed, sealed beam units. That's for sure. Yeah, of course that shouldn't happen. The whole point of them being sealed is that all stays together. It should never come apart. So, but obviously the sealant had failed and that's why we had water inside the lens as well. fits there we go it's in just gonna hit it with a quick spritz of zinc spray that'll do the job won't it and it's anti-corrosive as well which is useful So when I actually take it all apart and do everything properly, like replace this and replace these and, and all that, I'll actually go over and obviously spray these properly, these, uh, I don't know what you call them, the housings, the, the backing plates, whatever you call them, and obviously these buckets as well. Oops. Nothing to see here. It's coming off, that's the main thing. That's not supposed to happen. We've got something very weird happening now. Which shouldn't be happening. The main beams are on. Super low watt. Like, 
there's no side lights in those main beam units. They're just one bulb and it's just high beam, but they're getting a partial uh, supply there. And I'm not sure why. The main beam are on full, but the low beam lights or the low slash high beam lights are, bo are off or getting again some kind of reduced voltage because there's no small bulb in the outer lights it's just a dip slash main bulb so like a 55 slash 60 watt there's two filaments one for dip one for high but they're being somewhat partially lit so i don't know what's happening now because essentially we've replaced it with h4s from the sealed beam we've replaced it with halogen but it's the same wiring, it's the same pins, it's the same plugs, it's the same principle of low beam and high beam on the outside and high beam on the inside. So I don't know why it's confused now. So at this point we need to ask the Oracle, the Volvo Oracle. By that I mean Kalia, uh, very good uh, close friend of, of mine and of the channel, is very much behind the scenes. That He's the one who actually knows what he's doing. I just pretend to know what I'm doing, so I need to ask him because he will probably have the answer. And also Florian as well, the guy that I got the engine off that I fitted to Magnus. He's actually fitted quad headlamps to his Volvo 740. He actually fitted LEDs to his but I think I remember him saying something about wiring and things like that. So I'm going to ask him. So I just removed the harness from the car. So this is how it works. So this was the piece that I got from America with the quad headlamps. So you've got the three pin there where it connects onto the loom on the car. And then you've got these two here, which are your H4 connectors. Well, almost actually they're, I think they're actually reversed. So, so we've got the three pin there for the, outer lights and then there's the two pin here which is a three pin plug but there's two wires to it for the inner now it's the same on the e-codes i've actually still got elsa's e-codes here and if we can find the plug so if we have a look on the back of the e-codes you can see that it's a three pin so normally on the car side it plugs into that directly whereas of course for the american ones it plugs into there the same and then goes on to the two headlamps. So yeah, quite a simple thing, plug and play, or so it would seem. So yeah, it seems as though we've got an issue and it's actually reversed pins because of, of course there has to be something weird like that, doesn't there? So hopefully we can replace these pins well, swap them over um, without breaking the connector because we've got sort of probably 40 year old plastic there. So that's also been exposed to heat all of its life so um yeah because they, they do get quite hot the connections so well not hot but they do obviously warm up anyway let's give it a go there we go so we put in put that that way put that in there And then we put that one in there. And hopefully that will work now. We'll give it a go. We might blow something up, we'll try it. So you can see it on this side. So we've got the three pin there, which plugs into that. And then a connection there. And also that one, which is the one we've installed. So yeah. So we're going to disconnect this side because this side is still incorrect wiring, well potentially. So we'll just try one side for now and see what happens. Well, we've got lightage. Ooh, so far so good. Right, let's try the main then. See what happens. Yes, that's it. We've got it. So 
So I think I can see what's happening here. We've kind of improved something, but we haven't as well, because what's happening is I think the high beams are on now. I think they, they always were though, weren't they? On the outer ones, I think the high beam was always on because they were always really bright. The high beam is switched off in the car. It's just on low beam, just the normal headlights. Then when I turn the high beam on, the low beam comes on on the outer lights and the high beam comes on in the middle lights. So it's still reversed. We've still got pins not in the correct order there, but we have improved something because we don't have all four lights on all of the time. So we need to reverse the pins in another way. We've swapped over those pins, but we need to swap over those pins now. Stab myself. Okay. So we've got green going into number two. These connectors could do with cleaning up, really. There's still all that Arizonian dust all over them. How about that? Let's try it. Cash me outside. Here we go. Here we go. But yeah, so that's how it should normally look. That's your low beam. And you can see there, like I say, you've got that kick up on the side. And yeah, that's as it should be. But I think we need to probably do something about the, the direction of the aims because they are a little bit, uh, I think she's a little bit boss eyed at the moment, but we'll check that. And just for comparison, I'll show you the high beam. So you can see the kick up there, so if I'm a street sign on the left hand side of the road you can see that at a certain level that little bit catches the light and kicks it over into this direction up and to the left you can see that there so of course I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Kalia and to Florian for helping me out I don't know how long that would have taken me to figure out if I ever managed to figure it out so I really appreciate you guys as as always for helping me out uh, yeah, it's good to know people, isn't it? It's good to know people that know what they're doing instead of just winging it, as I usually am. But uh, we're getting there. And uh, yeah, the main thing is, it's sorted now. She's ready to go. She's ready for the road. I'd love to take her out for a drive in this video, but the weather's really bad. The roads are really in poor state. It was below zero yesterday, so I think there's a bit of salt on the roads from the, from the spreaders because they, they spread salt here. And yeah, it's just not very nice out there. So I'm going to give it a miss today. But when the weather's a little bit nicer, we'll take her out for a spin. We'll go on a, on a nice cruise because it's been a while, hasn't it, since I did any filming of driving around in the Volvo. So, yeah, we'll do that when the weather's a bit nicer. Thank you to everyone watching the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully it helps a few of you out as well. And I'll catch you in the next one.